Right, hello, and um, welcome to this week's angling blog. You join me and Baz on a Sunday morning, and we're out in search of pike. Um, you join us on a still water. The rivers um, are like chocolate, we've not stopped raining, and the um, canal is gin clear. <laughs> Weird, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, I'm on the search for basically a still water that I can try um, in these conditions that's got pike in it. So we're on a water that's brand new to me. I've never seen the place before. So it's going to be interesting to see if we can get a pike. Um, the water is, it is a big water, but, you know, fishing maize and stuff like that with, with stay and deep waters and we stick float fishing and more than happy fishing um, new places and deep places and big places. Um, I'll go over my setups um, and how I intend to approach this new water. So let's have a look at the setups. Right, so just arrived first thing in the morning. And the first thing I'm going to do before I do anything else is have a good cast around. And what you're looking for is depths all over the swim. Any changes in depths, any um, drop offs, any slightly deeper water, it might go out and then drop down and it might only be a foot. Have a good cast around so you're getting a good idea of what's out in front of you before you're even casting. You need to know what's out in front of you. Right, so I've had a good cast around now. It's a good even depth all the way across. Shallower, obviously closer in, but as it goes out, it's a bit of a, a flat bottom. I haven't found any variations. So the next thing that I want to know is any changes or what the bottom's like. So what I do is I put my trace on and have a good cast around and I've been doing that for the past 10, 10 minutes and I haven't brought in a single leaf twig or anything now as you know <laughs> that would find it and no snags and anything like that so I've got an area that I want to fish so I've been going over it a couple of times with the hooks on no debris come back so I'm presuming the bottom's quite clear and that is how I go about the start of a venue have a good cast around the philosophy I go with is a is a good bait in a good spot that you know you know there's a reason for a pike to be there is better than just casting out and hoping. So yeah. Found me spot and I'm put about to put a bait out. Right, so just run over my setup for the day. Got a fox um rubber stop on the line to set the depth, a bead so I can see when it's caught like that. Um, it's a polystyrene float, I think you get about two of them for a quid, two quid. Light as a feather and high visibility. It's a 60 pound braid, um, Esox Piker. An 18 gram Fox Sinker Stubby. A quick change bead and then an 18 inch wire trace. As I say on all my videos, I'll put a link at the top now to my making a wire trace video. Right, so there's the rig in its entirety, the float, all the components, and today I'm going to start with a smelt. It's always my go-to bait on any new venue. You know, load it with oil, cast it out and see how we do. It's always my start-off bait. On a river, normally a heaven, but on a still water, it's always a smelt. So yeah, let's get it out there. Right, so the rods are out. Um, I've got a smelt against that reed line there, just off it, hoping that anything patrolling along there. Baz has got his, find it, another sat, uh, smelt fished out right in front. And the third rod is a sardine, and that's on the ledger, just out into open water. So yeah, fingers crossed, there is pike in here, and we can at least, you know, get a run with being start. So at the start, when you're, you know, like plumbing up without a trace on, you get the general depth, and then if you put a trace on and, and nothing's coming back, that's one sign. But when you're putting baits out like that, which has been out for about an hour on the ledger, and it's coming back completely clear. So yeah, if the bottom was choddy and stuff like that, It'd come back with leaves and all bits of debris on it, but all the baits are coming back clear, so that's another way of working out your water. You find the depths, 
you're looking for any changes in depth is always a good place to start and of course you're looking at the bottom because what you don't want is that sitting in a load of leaves and the pike never seeing it so just making the changes i've had a um, sardine out for a while what i'm doing now is i've swapped over to my air needle and never hold it in your hands you know it is dangerous and just filling it full of air and what this will do is the lamp here will get me extra distance to try water that i've not tried and we'll have a look at how it's going to sit in the edge that air putting into it hopefully is going to make it pop up the lead's on the bottom and that's how the bait's going to sit up in the water obviously you trace depth off but out there it's deeper obviously than there and that bait will just sit up in the water so let's get it out and see if we can get a take right so swim one um had baz had a one run and um, that you know let go of the bait one drop run and um, we've just moved to another swim now um the plan today is we tried two hours in the first swim we're going to try a couple of hours in the second one and then move closer back to the car park for the third swim um it's splitting the water into three hourly slots um see how we do normally if there's a pike about you know it doesn't take too long to find the bait so yeah just getting the rods back out in the second swim smaller ones normally flat more than the big ones so hold it up away from you like that there's one of the hooks and then that one just by its teeth so be careful and get in like that and they normally just a little bit of skin there we go and that's the hook out right so first pike of the day on a new venue little small jack um coming on a smelt you see me just un un um, unhooking him then and lovely colors lovely greens and so if Baz comes in close on top of his head see all the colors on top of it a lovely pike a lovely small little pike and more than welcome as i say working new venues out always difficult and um, you've got to put the time in moving round and trying different locations this is the second swim of the day and it's produced this little small pike and well, let's get him back where he belongs back in the water right so that um fish just gone back time to get the kettle on the old pot noodle for me and baz we're not eating smelt <laughs> get the kettle on and the good thing if you forget your spoon or your fork like i have today you can always drink it lifesaver <laughs> So plenty of cloud cover on a venue like this isn't a bad thing. As I say, overcast day. For the venue that's four to five foot deep and relatively clear, it's the type of thing you want. You don't want a bright, clear day. Never good piking conditions, but overcast like that, fantastic. Right, and another thing, like obviously when learning a new water, is do it at dawn till, till dusk. Um, as you can see, the wind's gone off it a bit now and you're starting to see fish topping in the area you know around the area and bubbles coming up of feeding fish so you know gives you an idea of where the fish are you know for next time you come because in winter they'll generally be in one area so it's all trying to put their little pieces of the jigsaw together to work a place out and like i say if hopefully at the end of it you can you know, come on the venue next time and have a better idea where to set up. Right, we've come to the end of the session now um yeah first time on the venue 
fantastic result. One one pike, and I think we've had two, one drop run, and I think two drop runs actually we had at the end of it, um, which is fantastic. Um, so what have we learned today? Well, obviously we've learned that this venue does have pike in it, um, and they will take a dead bait because some some places they won't. On some venues, the pike just don't don't take dead bait. Um, so it does it served the purpose. Um, a small piece of the jig, so it's been it's been tough because there's been a wind on it most of the day, but we've give it from dawn until dusk on last light. I know Baz is just hoping for a, a last run there. Hopefully it'll come. Um, but we've seen the odd fish top. Um, another thing I've learned from it today is more than likely all the takes have come within the first maybe hour. So maybe next time, you know, spend an hour an half in each peg and cover a lot more pegs we only did two today but i think we'd have moved a lot quicker you know had we not had any action in this peg but we're getting my fish we probably give it longer than we should have but yeah hopefully this video gives you a few little tips on how, how i approach a new venue and yeah a pike as i always say one chance of a pike when you come piking is all i ask for so to get one you've been fantastic so yeah thank you very much for watching it'd be great if you could like and subscribe and i'll catch you all next time <laughs>